Well, welcome back everyone. Today, I'm not doing a car video, I'm going to do a Blender tutorial on how to set up your HDRIs in a world shader in Blender. I know there's a thousand tutorials how to do this. Mine's a little different. The typical world shader, you go click, 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 and just makes it brighter or darker, and that's about it. This gives you the power to set up pretty much everything. You can adjust the background, you can adjust the shadows, you can adjust the mood lighting, all those variables inside Blender to get your scene to look exactly how you want in Eevee. So that's what we're doing. Let's get to the scene first, a little bit of storytelling, then we'll get right into the tutorial. See you guys there. These gosh darn kids nowadays have complete and utter disregard for authority. They see no trespassing. They look up and then they see the cameras. And they're like, you know what? Let's just break in here with our bolt cutters. Leave the evidence right there on the ground and drink heavily in the night with these cheap bottles of wine. And then when we're done, we'll just leave our shit everywhere, defacing this piece of 160 year old history. When I was a child or a teenager, I didn't do anything like this. No, sir. Okay, so here we are. I have this uh, white box right here just because it's a little easier to show you what's going on in the shadows to illustrate why I like using this other method over uh, the pretty much tried and true method which everyone shows you on YouTube. Maybe someone's done the one I have done. Uh, I've actually been doing it for a while because I needed something that gave me a little more control. So if you're using this method right here, nothing wrong with it. You know, you have your HDRI, which I get all my HDRIs from, um, well, a couple other spots too. But you can get them free from Polyhaven. You can go right in here and get your HDRIs and pull down whatever one you like to do your tutorial. I'm using the Drakenstein or Drakenstein Quarry. It's in here somewhere. But all the objects, if we go back to Polyhaven, all the objects set for a handful in this scene right here. is also from Polyhaven. So we got a dead tree limb. Oh, I forgot to put that in there. But, you know, you got all this cool stuff to make whatever you want. If you look at this little cliff thing, you can see it right here. There it is. And we've got some wine bottles that these kids left all around. You know, this, uh, this, this isn't from um, Polyhaven. I mean, it is, but... The uh, texture setup is the way I do glass a little differently for Eevee because theirs was set up for none other than cycles. And of course, in Eevee, it doesn't really look that good. So you have to do a little more tricks in Eevee to get your glass to look a little more like glass in Eevee. But anyways, let's get back to the HDRI part. So I'm going to center on this. Let's get back over here. So this is your, your basic setup. And you're at the mercy of just going up and down, right? That's pretty much it. You know, works as advertised. It's a simple way to do it, and it works. I'm not saying that's wrong, but wouldn't it be nice to have control over everything, like your background, your HDRI background image? Maybe you want to change the color of the shadows. Maybe you want the shadows to be um, darker and lighter without affecting the background, right? Let's go over here, and I'll first give you a demo. Go over to the New World Order. So if you look here, has some more stuff it's really not that complicated but we have our shadows so if we go here in the shadows if i want to go right to this guy which is basically is just changing the color with a, with a color ramp this guy right here to give you a little different in the shadows and then we have the normal hdri pumped into this guy so let me just go ahead and show the end of the node tree and if you look right here we can now with these curves, just like in a video editor or Photoshop, we can adjust the background only how we want. So we can bring in a little, make it a little bit darker, pump the highlights up, do all that cool stuff that you can do in Photoshop without manipulating anything else in here. So let's go ahead and blend both of these together. And you see this too right here. This is just going to control the shadows. See the shadows now going up, and you can see the background is no longer getting brighter. So we can control just the shadow right here. And in the background, we can go up and down on the brightness with it right here. So how cool is that? This is my go-to now after I figured out how to do it. And I was like, oh man, this is going to be my go-to way to do HDRIs in Blender Eevee. 
I'm not sure if it works in cycles, but I am just do Eevee because this whole scene right here, if I render this in 4K, render image, watch this. This is why I love Eevee. Yes, I know it doesn't look quite as good as cycles for sure, but the time savings, not 10 seconds. Well, it's a little longer than I wanted to be, but 10 seconds. It has been in for five to 10, depending where the camera is. It usually takes like five seconds. Not sure why it's taking 10 seconds now. Probably because I'm capturing in the background. That's why it is. All right, so let's go over how to make this. So let's go over to do, 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 New World right here on the how. And you see right here, this is pretty much what you're gonna see. And you wanna get to it, you, you know, you got your objects and you got your world right here. So this is pretty much what you're gonna see when you first do this. You're gonna have a background, you know, you can change the color, kind of same way like that. Brightness right here if you want, or you can do the strings right here, multiple ways. That's about all you have to do it. So let's just go ahead and let's do an environmental texture. Let's just plug it into there. Make sure we got our mapping over here. Just by hitting Control T is how you do that. Just a thousand tutorials how to do that. So let's go ahead and let's just. There it is. Right here. I'm going to grab. Hmm, I think this is the one that I've processed. I like to process the background too. You know, kind of get it more how I want to look. So that way it's. I'm not quite doing too much. I mean, you can just load right in the HDRI. But I, you know, it just makes it easier for me when I do this just to uh, process it, get it to look how I want it to look. And that's just how I do it. You can do it either way. I think it'll still work the same way. So now that we got this, we need to add a couple of things, right? So let's first go ahead and duplicate this. There we go. We're going to duplicate this guy. We're going to bring it down right here. And let's go ahead. We're going to get a mix shader. All right, we're going to do a light path. This is drag is camera way, camera ray into the factor. And people use this a lot for doing compositing in Blender. So instead of just compositing a 3D object into an image or whatever, we're going to composite our everything else into our 3D scene. This gives you a lot more control, in my opinion. So let's take the background from here background to here and take it out to the surface right here so then right here what we need to do we need to add color ramp and down here curves let's take this into color take this into a factor mix color all right, pop it, should pop right there, yes. Let's go ahead and put it down to the, over here, I need it there. We need this to go into the A, take the color here. No, not, not there yet, but this needs to go into the B, that's right. And the reason why we're doing this is because this is how, if we go just to this guy right here, this is how we're going to affect our mood. So we can make a, let's just do red for this one. Of course, that's very, very, very red. But from right here, if we want to pop it out, we can mix them both together. And that will effectively change your shadow. So let's continue on. It'll make more, I mean, you've seen how it works, but it'll make more sense once you see it set up exactly how it works. And then we're going to take the color to here. All right. And let's just go ahead and... Put this to the surface. And that is pretty much it. Pretty easy. Let me just get this a little closer all in here. I don't know. I'm horrible with my organization of these nodes. All right. So let's just get it so you see it a little better, right? I got a 4K monitor. So right here, as you see, we can now go to the red. It's not changing the background. So in the the background, we want to darken up a little bit, give it the color you want, but it is not affecting the shadows, which is awesome. 
And that's what we want. So this is kind of a little too red, so let's blend it in with the original. This is the original color, and this is what we're adjusting our mood. So we got a little more right there. And we can also change the shadows a little bit by dipping these two in. This a little more. Let's just go back. Yeah, see that? All right, so we got that kind of set up. You know, I'm a big fan of making the shadows slightly blue. That's just me. So we can... I like the blue shadows, guys. See? This looks, this looks nice and filmic to me. Or cool. I like the cool look. Want to be a cool guy. So one thing, too, is you see right here, this is just our background, not affecting the shadows. And this right here, this is how we can brighten or darken our shadows, because that's very important. Sometimes when you pop your background color up or just your whole strength of it, this gets blown out and this might be how you want it, but you don't want the, you know, the background to be so blown out. So this just gives you complete control over everything in your image. So maybe if you're over here, let's just go back to where it's red right here. We'll just pretend we're having an Armageddon scene, right? Let's just, uh, right there. And then look, you want to do this to the background. Look at this. Oh, a nuclear bomb went off, right? This, yeah, look, cool things like that. You can do whatever you want to your heart's content. So, yeah. Well, hopefully, let's just get a little farther back. Hopefully this has been helpful to some of you guys who wanted a little more control over their HDRIs or their world in Blender Eevee. Don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, guys, peace out.